You've probably already heard a ton about Google's new Pixel 4, so I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to unbox the phone and I'm going to try to answer the question, is it worth it? So, taking the lid off, the first thing you're going to see is both smartphones that have just been announced, the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL, and below that a compartment containing both retail packages, but also a whole bunch of other Google goodies. The retail packaging, the box you'd get if you went into a store and bought the Pixel 4, it's pretty nice. It feels high quality, sturdy, and minimalistic. And if we slip that lid off, it's pretty standard stuff, but three things to note. You get a USB-A to USB-C adapter, which just means you can quickly transfer stuff from your old phone by cable. You also get a USB-C to USB-C cable to charge this phone, and below that, an 18 watt fast charger. In terms of the goodies that came alongside this, there were four little Google branded packets, and so opening the top one, turns out it's a fortune cookie, and within about five minutes I'd eaten all four, and so below that there were pop sockets which have these little sticky pads and you stick them onto the back of the phone and they become a holder or a stand. There's also a star map symbolizing the new astrophotography feature, which I have played around with and I do have some thoughts on, but finally in this unboxing experience we've got some Google branded stickers. So there are six important characteristics of these new phones. We've got design, display, camera, software, the new motion sense system, and finally value, is it actually worth it? So design, and I don't really need to tell you that Google has taken a new direction here. This is one of the first phones with a square camera bump, and it's got a matte rear finish combined with matte black sides. I'm a fan. I could definitely see some people thinking it looks a bit like a toy, especially with the bright orange finish and coloured power key, but it doesn't feel like one. We're still talking metal and glass construction, and the finish makes life a lot easier when it comes to keeping the phone looking clean. Plus, everything from the body to the buttons are super solid, and they've managed to build in IP68 water resistance as well as wireless charging. There's no headphone jack, but on balance, I think they've made a lot of good decisions with the design. And that leads us on to the front, where the interesting design design choices continue. Instead of the notch they had last year, Google has opted for a pretty massive top bezel, primarily to fit all the sensors needed for their new motion sense technology, which I'll come to. It's a bold move. I don't think the phones look bad from the front, but at the same time, side by side with some of the other devices released this year, there is a risk of the pixels looking a little 2017. But there is no doubt that the display panel itself is good. Um, this is the second key point. You get a Full HD or Quad HD Plus OLED display, depending on which phone you go for, and more importantly, these are 90Hz panels, which gives them this extra touch of responsiveness, and Google has also managed to somewhat sidestep the extra battery drain this can cause. On a normal 90Hz panel, the screen just refreshes at 90 times a second, regardless of what you're actually doing on it. Whereas on the Pixel 4, it's contextual. It depends on first of all what application you're in, but also if you're looking at the phone. The Pixel 4 is aware of what your eyes are paying attention to and will adjust frame rate accordingly. You're getting a good panel too. Brightness, HDR support, colour accuracy, an A plus viewing experience, but just not the largest displays out there. The 4 has a 5.7 inch panel and the XL model is 6.3, so in terms of screen size, they're both smaller than their iPhone counterparts. Okay, so the cameras on this phone are quite possibly the most hyped feature. Ever since the Pixel 2, this line of phones has been well regarded as producing the best images on a smartphone, and so with this kind of expectation in mind, I'm part really impressed, but also slightly disappointed. The disappointment comes from the hardware. The main new addition is a 2 times optical zoom camera, which combined with Google's Super Res Zoom, you should be getting crisp shots at even 5 times magnification, and that's great, but I would have loved to see an ultra-wide camera here. We've had them on devices as cheap as $300, and it really would have added a massive amount of flexibility to this setup. On top of that, part of me was hoping for a sensor upgrade, but the main camera is basically the same as last time. On the other hand, the magic happens in the software, and there are some things I just can't wait to spend more time with. The Pixel 4's more powerful chip compared to last year means images process in almost real time. The high dynamic range you're used to seeing only after you've taken a shot is now visible whilst taking it, and this allows you to do something even cooler. One tap on screen brings up two sliders, one for brightness as usual, but also now one to adjust the exposure of dark areas. So all of a sudden, you can take balanced looking shots of scenes that would otherwise be almost silhouettes. I will need to spend more time with this though, to find out if the effect is something that could just be achieved using an editing app, so do subscribe for the camera test coming soon, that would be amazing.
Oh yeah, and you might already know, I love a bit of night mode, and Pixel 4 takes it further with astrophotography. If your phone is on a tripod or leaning against a stable surface at night, it'll automatically capture 15 frames and fuse them together for some apparently next level photography. On the front, we've actually lost a camera. The previous group selfie cam from the Pixel 3 is gone, but I don't think it's a huge deal. The front camera here is already pretty wide. So, taking a look past camera into software, and we've got the obvious stuff, like this phone shipping with the latest and greatest Android 10, and guaranteed updates for three years, but there's actually quite a bit more going on. Google Assistant, for starters, is smarter than ever, and is now built directly into the operating system, which means that it's A, faster than before, and B, can understand context. I could, for example, ask it to show me Taylor Swift on Twitter, and then just say now on Instagram, and the assistant would understand that I'm still talking about Taylor Swift. I did notice, though, during the presentation that the Pixel 4 no longer has unlimited full-quality photo storage that the past Pixel phones had, and so that's kind of a shame considering that the actual internal storage is already pretty low, starting at 64 gigs and maxing out at 128. What I did think was really cool is the Pixel Recorder. It can record entire conversations, automatically turn them into text, and then allow you to search for specific things that have been said just by dictating them, all without data. It's also, of course, a vanilla software skin, free from bloatware, which might in some part help to save battery. But with these phones, especially the smaller one, battery is something I'm a little worried about. The Pixel line of phones is historically efficient with the battery that they do have. The issue is that this capacity is pretty small. You get 3,700 milliamp hours on the XL model, which is passable, but it's the 2,800 that you get on the standard smaller 4 that I'm a little worried about. I've not seen that capacity battery on an Android phone in quite a long time, but Google still promises all day battery, so I guess a test is in order. Motion Sense is probably the most unusual new feature. You've probably heard of radar. It's a system often used in airplanes to be able to detect nearby objects. Well, Google has spent five years getting this into a smartphone, basically to give it an awareness of its surroundings with three potential benefits. The first being presence. Pixel 4 will know if you sit down next to it and it can turn its display on in anticipation. And probably cooler, the byproduct of this is that it can power itself down when you walk away, which saves battery. The second is reach. It'll know when you're reaching for the phone so it can get itself ready to unlock instantly. Plus, the depth sensor in this top bezel means you have secure 3D face unlocking, although no fingerprint scanner here. Third is air gestures, and you might have guessed, I've got mixed feelings about it. On one hand, we've seen this a lot of times before, and it's never really been anything beyond a gimmick. But it is a little different here. Being able to silence alarms just by hovering your palm over your phone is something I could see myself using, and the skipping of tracks as well just by swiping above it. I'd use that. Even though this isn't the first time I've seen this feature, it's the first time I've seen it done well. The main difference here is that your gestures don't need a huge degree of accuracy. It's not finicky. It just works with the natural motion of your hand. Combined with all this new software, the Pixel is starting to feel like a more aware smartphone that needs less physical input than ever before. Okay, finally, value. Does it actually make sense to buy these phones? And it's a bit of a tricky one, because if you watch the launch event, you might know that Google came up with their base price of $799, and compared to the $1,000 iPhone 11 Pro, that actually sounds kind of reasonable. But if you did want a good-sized battery, you've got to go for the XL model, and if you wanted a decent amount of storage, the kind that's almost a base storage for many other phones, you've got to pay another $100, and so you end up at $999 or $1,000 anyway, so price is not a reason to go for the Pixel. It's also not the most powerful phone with the Snapdragon 855 instead of the 855 Plus that a lot of other phones have, and 6 gigs of RAM instead of 8 or 12. We also lose the front-firing dual speaker setup before, and that's replaced with a single downwards-firing speaker complemented by the earpiece. So, when I put it that way, it might not sound great, but I actually really like the Pixel 4 phones. It's a combination of things. The hardware feels incredibly solid. The display is awesome. High refresh rate, great contrast. Stuff just looks good on it. Plus, I like the direction the software is moving in. It's becoming simpler, whilst actually being smarter under the hood. And even this new radar system, whilst I can't see everyone using hand air gestures, the fact that it knows you're reaching for the phone and can prepare its face scanner in advance is amazing. It's the kind of technology that people won't even realize is being used and yet it makes their life better. Also, the Pixel just feels good to use. It's got great haptics, and so you get a really nice tactile experience. 
So, on balance, yes, some features do need further in-depth testing, and yeah, there are some notable disadvantages as well with the Pixel. It's not a perfect phone, but it is a good phone. I like a lot of things about it, and it's one of those devices where I'd recommend you actually pick one up and try and use one for yourself, because it's almost better than its spec sheet would suggest. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.